Well, good evening, everyone. We'll go by uh, my clock, so we'll get started now. That doesn't even say 8.30 yet, but uh, or 7.30 actually, it says 8.30. Uh, good evening, those that are here and those that are on Zoom, welcome. Uh, we look forward to a good time as we look at the Word of God. Let's just uh, open up our, our time in prayer. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come here tonight. Thank you that we can open your word. There are so many, so many things in it. We can never exhaust the things that we can learn in the word of God. So Father, help us tonight. Help us to maybe just learn one thing and that we might go from here encouraged and built up in the most precious faith. So we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it was May 11th, 1960. At the Henderson Hospital in Hamilton, a baby boy was born. I was there. That baby boy was me. It's the first time that I could say I was there. Before that, I didn't exist. January 1992, my son broke his leg tobogganing at Camp Lailolai. He ended up in the hospital in St. Catharines. He was chosen to receive a visit from the Toronto Blue Jays that year. By the way, they won the World Series that year. And I was there. November 26, 2020, I'm standing here in front of you, and you here seeing me, both of us together, we are present, I'm here. May 31st, 2005, the day of my retirement, <laughs> I am, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I'm going to be there. I want to read you a little story that I picked up. It's quite humorous, but it serves a purpose. A couple had two little boys, ages eight and 10, who were always getting into trouble. If anything was disturbed or missing in the neighborhood, their sons were probably involved. Their, money, their mother, asked their pastor if she could drop off her boys at church so, he, that, so that he could put the fear of God in them. The pastor agreed, but asked to see them individually. The eight-year-old would go into the pastor's study first, then the older boy would be counseled. The pastor was a huge man with a booming voice, sat the younger brother down and asked him sternly, sternly son, where is God? The boy's mouth dropped open, but he made no response. The pastor repeated the question in a little firmer and louder. Son, where is God? Again, the boy just sat there bug-eyed and made no attempt to answer. A bit exasperated, the pastor raised his voice even more, shook his finger at the boy's face and bellowed, Son, I asked you a question. Where is God? The boy screamed and bolted from the study. As he passed his brother, he said, we're in big trouble this time. God is missing and they think we did it. <laughs> but it brings a good point. Where is God? Today, people ask that question all the time when things happen, when COVID happens, when 9-11 happened, people are always saying, where is God? Where is God? Open your Bibles to Ezekiel. Ezekiel uh, 
Ezekiel, he um, outlines another Jerusalem in this, in this book. Another temple. And then he ends up with this verse, which we're going to look at over the rest of this time period. Ezekiel 48, 35. And in the middle of the verse, it says, And the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. A future city, the Lord is there. It is the only time Jehovah Shammah is mentioned. But let me tell you, the implications are seen from Genesis to Revelation. That being said, there are many ways, as I pondered this, uh, this word, there are many ways that we could approach this topic. But I wanted to make it personal in our lives today. I'm going to stay away from all the prophetical aspects of, of Ezekiel. And I want to look at our lives as it relates to Jehovah Shammah. First, uh, let's just look at a brief history on how we get to Ezekiel 48.35. Now, this is the Coles Notes version. Well, maybe even less than the Coles Notes version. I just picked out a few dates to kind of emphasize where we are at this point in time. We get here because, obviously, of sin. Um, we'll start with uh, 931 B.C., the 12 tribes were split into two. 10 northern, which is Israel, with the capital of Samaria, and two southern, which is Judah, in the capital of Jerusalem. In 722 BC, Israel, the northern kingdom, is taken into captivity by the Assyrians. Then we're going to skip down. In 622 BC, during the reign of Josiah, over, Ju over Judah, he realized the awfulness of the sin of Judah, and he attempts, attempts to bring revival, but it doesn't last. At that point in time, God proclaims that when Josiah dies, there will be judgment. 609 BC, Josiah was killed in battle on the plain of Meg Megiddo. God's judgment begins. 605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar's first siege on Jerusalem and exile to Babylon. The people continued in their sin. 597 BC, Nebuchadnezzar's second siege on Jerusalem, and he takes King Jehoiakim into exile in Babylon. 586 BC, the third and final siege on Jerusalem. It was captured and the temple and city walls were destroyed. God's glory had left. Now we turn to Ezekiel. And from about chapters 36 to the end, Ezekiel tells us of God's judgment on the enemies he tells us, he lays out his vision of the new temple and the new Jerusalem. And then in verse 35, the last verse of that book, we see the new name of Jerusalem, Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. He had received the promise of the return of God's glory and God's presence. Thus, we have come to the saying, Jehovah Shammah. I want to take the rest of this time to look at three statements. One is the Lord was there. Two is the Lord is here. And three, the Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord was there, the Lord is here, and the Lord is there. First, 
The Lord was there. As I said before, my journey started May 11th, 1960. I had a beginning. Some of you might have had beginnings before that. I'm not quite sure, but some of you may have, but I wasn't there. Let's just look at Genesis 1, verse 1. Probably most could say it off by heart. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Then let's look at John 1 and 1. John 1, verse 1. Could say it off the heart, I guess. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. You see, the Lord was there in the beginning, not in 1960. The Lord was there in the beginning. Even before the world came into existence, God was there. God was there. Exodus chapter 3. Given you a couple of examples now of God was there. We've established that he was there before the beginning. And we've established that he created us. Exodus chapter 3. Well, let's just read verses 1 through 12. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will go, go I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob. Of the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face as he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by my reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them up, to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, cry, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon, upon this mountain. Now Moses was chosen by God to deliver the Israelites from the, uh, from the Egyptians. And he was supposed to go to Pharaoh. Well, what did he say? He was, uh, who am I? Who am I going to do? What am I going to do? The key to that whole thing. And even after God says this to him, he still wants more assurance. But the key to the whole thing was, I will be with thee. I will be with thee. 
God was there for Moses. Second Timothy, we'll move into the New Testament now. Second Timothy four. Second Timothy chapter four, verses sixteen and seventeen. This is Paul speaking. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Paul was put in prison. Every one of his friends had left him. It seemed like he was all alone in prison. But the key herein is again, it says, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. God was there. God was there with Paul. All these are examples of that the Lord was there in the Old Testament and the New Testament. There are so many examples we can come up with. We can keep going on all, all night. But he was there. He was there in the beginning. He created us. He was there for Moses. He was there for Paul. We could find example after example. May 11th, 1960, he was there. January 1992, I know he was there. The Lord was there at every point in my life. Do we ever stop to realize just how awesome a God that we have? As we look back as far as we can in history, he was there. He was there before time even began. Do we ever stop to realize just how awesome that he is? That was the Lord. He was, he was there. Now the Lord, he is here. Let's just look at a, a few verses. I'm just going to uh, mention them and then we'll move along. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31 and 8 reads, uh, And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. That was Moses experiencing that. Proverbs uh, 15, 3. Let's quickly read that one. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And then the last, Matthew 28. Matthew 28. And verse 20. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. The Lord is here. God's presence is with us and came in the form of a baby born in Bethlehem named Jesus, the son of God. He came for the purpose to die for the sin of mankind he died upon the cross at Calvary and shed his blood for our sin. He then rose the third day to claim victory over sin, death, and the grave. For all those here tonight, he is here right now. Matthew 18, verses 20. Matthew 18, verse 20 says, 
For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. He is here. But we can go even one step further. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. And if we are a believer, he is not just here. He is here. John 14 and 16 reads. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Have you recently stopped to consider that the Lord is here? When I think of that sometimes, I get truly convicted. Because what am I thinking, and what am I saying, and what am I doing? Where am I going? But the Lord is here. Sometimes we forget, and we think of the future all the time. But the Lord is right here. I repeat what I said before. Do we, re re excuse me. Do we realize just how awesome the Lord is. Now we have to look at the Lord is there. Now, this name, Jehovah Shammah, was the second name given to Jerusalem. Does anybody happen to know what the first was? I think we studied it last week. Jehovah Sin Kenyu, that was the first name given to Jerusalem, the Lord, our righteousness. And then it was Jehovah Shammah. When God's presence left the temple, the Israelites would end up eventually being scattered to the four corners of the earth and taken captive by surrounding nations. God did not completely wash his hands of the Israelites, however, his love and mercy were always with them. Through Ezekiel, God promised restoration and a return of his presence in Jerusalem. The city would be called Jehovah Shammah. Jerusalem's walls were rebuilt. And how about, how about God's presence? Well, let's read Luke 2. Luke chapter 2. Starting in at verse 25. Luke 2 verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. God's presence had returned to Jerusalem, to the temple. So how does Jehovah Shammah apply to us? Well, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good 
and not disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Matthew 28 and 20 says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So you and I can't be in our future or know our future, but the Lord can. Remember in the beginning message, I said May 31st, 2025, my retirement. I, I can't say that for sure, but the Lord knows and the Lord's already there. Daniel 2, 27 and 28. I'll just read it. Daniel 2, 27 and 28 says, Daniel answered in the presence of the king. And he was talking with uh, uh, the king of, of Babylon at that point in time. And he had a dream. And he said, the secret which the king has to, uh, demanded, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, and the musicians, and the soothsayers show unto the king? But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. See, God knows the future. And then Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and then there, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So not only the Lord knows the future, he's in control of the future. So often... We live our lives looking ahead to something, whether it be uh, some sort of an event, doctor's appointment, uh, potential new job, um, someone is sick and on the verge of, of uh, passing. We are always looking into the future and trying to figure it out and to worry and we worry about it. We need to remind ourselves that the Lord is already there. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. You can't control your future, but he can. We need to trust in him. The second part of Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Shammah is this, and we'll read John 14 verses one to three. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare, prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. He is also in heaven, preparing a place for those who know him and love him. He will be there when we pass from time into eternity. A blessed hope for all of us who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. I say again, do we realize just how awesome the Lord is? I want to read you a song that I just happened to find. And it, uh, I quite like it. It's done by a Hubert Dapillion. I don't, can't even pronounce his name, but uh, he's wrote a number of songs. And this one is called, he is, he, he is There. There's a time in your life when you wanna give up. There's a moment you think nobody cares. There's a time in your life when things are black and white, but in every moment God understands. He is there in times of trouble. He is there in times of need. 
He is there today and tomorrow. He is there. He is there. There's a time in your life when the world stopped turning. There's a moment the sun seemed didn't shine. There's a time of sadness. There's a time of grief. But in every moment, God is in control. He is there in times of trouble. He is there in times of need. He is there today and tomorrow. He is there. He is there. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord, is there. Let's close in a word of prayer. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have this hope. We look at the scriptures and we can see the past. And we know that you were there in the beginning. And we know that you have dealt with peoples and tribes and nations over the years. Father, we also know that you are here. And we also know that the Lord Jesus is preparing a place for those who know him. We thank you for that hope. May we never forget how awesome the Lord is. In Jesus' name, amen.